All right, hello everybody. Welcome to our last lesson, psychology. Here, uh, we're going to take a look at relationships and psychology. So, our objectives and standards are to explain the relationship between parents and children. <coughs> excuse me, and to analyze different types of love. So, take a moment there to uh, read the standards, please. And our desired result, how do love and relationships impact our behavior and interactions? Vocabulary, generational identity. This is a theory that people of different ages tend to think differently about certain issues because of different experiences. So relationships of parents and children. Psychologists like Eric Erickson here believe that early and persistent patterns of parent-children interaction could influence later adult expectations about relationships. So, young children who have loving, responsive, and consistent parenting will most likely develop a trust of other people as well. Children who do not experience caring, trusting parents will most likely grow up to distrust others as well. In a parent-child relationship as well, we learn how to manipulate others to get what we want. And this is true for both parents and children. Parents, for example, are more willing to reward a child that behaves well. Um, and children understand that they will receive attention if they throw a temper tantrum. So other relationships. Children begin to apply what they have learned in their relationships with their parents to relationships with others. An example, your parents may have probably taught you say please and thank you. Um, and, you know, we use that throughout our lives then that may help them build and may help us build relationships with others since we learn that from our parents typically. <clears throat> they also learn what relationships should be like as they watch the marriage between their parents. Now, watching the marriage between their parents or the relationship between their parents, it can help them find and choose a partner as well and also teach them how to treat others in marital relationships. Children that witness uh, a loving, caring relationship between their parents will most likely do the same with others. However, evidence shows that children who witness violence between their parents may show aggression towards others. So conflict sources. Despite a loving, caring relationship between parents and children, conflict can occur during the adolescent years. And many of you are teenagers or young adults, and many of you probably know that you've probably bumped heads with your parents once or twice. I know I did when I was a teenager as well. Um, so teenagers may face many challenges, such as trying to understand their physical and emotional changes. This can lead to obviously conflict. Um, and in order to face these challenges, adolescents need parents that are confident in themselves as parents, uh, the values that they're trying to instill in their children, and also um, the parents need to be firm in their identity about who they are and what they do. <clears throat> so parents can serve as, as models and sources of stability for teenagers. However, each generation does have a generational identity. This means that parents and their children typically think different about various topics. I know this is kind of hard, so I do apologize, but here we have the baby boomer generation, okay? Um, 1940s, 1950s, 1960s, and then we have Generation X, which is 1970s and 1980s, and then we have like the millennial generation, 1990, 2000, 2010 or so. Um, and there's different things you'll see here in the timeline that are going on, like we have like the Cold War and the Vietnam War, uh, we have the Gulf War, uh, and then we have the most recent um, challenge, the Iraq War, right? Um, we also have some other technological changes, such as the television in the 1950s. This was a big change. Then we have credit cards around 1970, computers, 1980. And then we have the internet in 1990s or so. And then we have mobile phones in 2000. So again, all of these different changes can cause people to have different interactions and arguments or conflicts with their parents. Not all the time, but obviously you can see there's a lot of changes that can happen. You probably know that, you know, what your parents grew up doing and even what I grew up doing is different from what you did or what you do. So, you know, there is a generational identity sometimes that causes conflict. 
Differences in opinion do not immediately lead to conflict, but it can change the relationship between parents and children. Now, the relationship of love. People have a different type of love for their parents than they do for their partner, okay? Love can have a strong meaning between boyfriends and girlfriends without marriage. Um, we're not just saying that love is strictly reserved to, you know, once you get married, boyfriends and girlfriends can have a love for each other. However, most people believe that marriage without love is impossible or just unfortunate. So psychologist Isaac Michael Zick Rubin believes that this is a reason why many people struggle with adjusting to marriage because sometimes they're not sure where that love is or maybe, you know, maybe some of that love has gone away. Rubin also identified three major components of love, need and attachment, caring in terms of giving and intimacy. Okay, so those are the three things according to Rubin that make up the components of love. There are also two types of love, according to Hatfield. Passionate love is very intense, all-consuming, like it's all you think about as a person all day, you can't wait to be with them all the time, and it's exciting, it's kind of new, it's kind of fresh, you know, um, but it typically fades after some time. Now, when I say that, I don't mean that it goes away. What I mean is that typically that passionate love will turn into uh, compassion love. Now, passionate love can go away, like maybe you don't have compassion for that person anymore, um, but most times passionate love turns into compassionate love, which um, typically includes mutual companionship, friendship, working together for a common goal, um, you know, typically in marriage. Um, this is when we, when we get to marriage is compassionate love is, you know, caring for each other, you know, and things like that. Now, differences of love. In studies and research, Rubin also found out that there are differences in love between men and women. Now, while both, both were equal in terms of loving each other and caring for each other, research showed that women typically identified with or respected their boyfriends more. Um, that, you know, when they were in an early relationship or, you know, a relationship with a boyfriend that um, or another partner, that they typically cared for them a little bit more than men did. And there was also evidence that women tend to care for and love their female friends more so than males did with their friends. So again, you know, their girlfriends that they're hanging out with on a Saturday night or whatever, they typically love or care for them more so than men would typically say they love their friends. Social and emotional dimensions of life typically fall more so in place with women. That's not to say that men don't have those things, but we typically see women as caring, affectionate, emotional. Um, those types of things usually come to mind uh, when we think of women. But in recent years, since women and men are now more equal socially and economically, both can share signs of romance and affection towards each other as well. Now, another theory of love. Robert Sternberg uh, proposed another theory on the many forms of love, which he called the triangular theory of love. And it states that love is made up of three parts, intimacy, passion, and commitment. Okay, now let's go over this real quick. When we talk about liking, that only contain, uh, contains intimacy. So this means that it's like a true friendship, um, you know, without passion or long-term commitment. So you can say, oh, I like that person, or I like that boy or that girl. Um, you know, it, it, you, you're kind of starting out. It's just, it's just intimate. It's not really passion or commitment. Uh, companionate. This is intimacy and commitment. So what this means is, this is a long-term committed friendship, such as in marriage, but sometimes passion has faded as well. We can also have empty love, which is just a commitment. This is a decision to love each other without intimacy. So basically just kind of working together uh, to support the kids, or maybe you don't want to break up because, you know, you're, you know, you, you both make a good amount of money and you're, you, you know, you're, you're just kind of happy doing what you're doing, but there's no real in intimacy there. Facetious love is a commitment to each other based on passion but without intimacy. So it's very, it, it can be a very shallow relationship, not really a lot of uh, relationship there. We also have infatuation. You probably heard this phrase, uh, phrase before. This is passion only. This is just, you're obsessed with someone. You love them at first sight. You can't wait to be with that person all the time. You don't want to be without them. So this is just, just simple obsession, basically. 
And then we have romantic love, which uh, is intimacy and passion. Um, it's a physical and emotional attraction, but it lacks commitment. Um, one of the things that, you know, they like to refer to is a summer romance. Um, you know, maybe you meet somebody over the summer, you know, down the shore or working in a camp or working somewhere. And, you know, then, you know, you kind of like that person for two to three months and then they go back to school. Or, you know, this is a lot of college students, like colleges, you know, they come home for the summer and they work somewhere. Um, you know, they meet them for a little bit and they like each other, but then... Um, they, you know, go their separate ways to go back to school or wherever they're from, and they don't see each other again. So it's a summer romance. The ultimate goal of love is this consummate love in the middle of the triangle here. You need to have intimacy, passion, and commitment. And this is what makes a long-lasting marriage. Now, it is difficult to achieve, and it is challenging to achieve, even for couples who have been married a long time. But that's part of the ultimate goal. So marriage and divorce. When a couple decides to make a formal and public commitment to each other, it's known as marriage. And chances are good they will have a happy marriage if they come from the same economic, educational, and religious background, and they share the same views, like the same political views, or maybe views about raising their children, um, things like that. Long-lasting marriages can also be impacted if both spouses' parents had good marriages. Okay? Now, there are some other things that's, that... Um, support a good marriage such as um you know obviously caring for each other and willing to you know be there for each other no matter what and things like that however some marriages do not last and they end in divorce now there can be both internal and external factors that in that can impact marriages some of the internal factors could be maybe the partners don't agree with what their role in the marriage is like maybe they feel that um the man goes to work all the time and it's the woman's job to stay home and cook and clean. Now, if they agree on that, that's fine. But sometimes that can cause problems if they disagree. Um, maybe their view of themselves and their spouses are changing. Maybe they feel like they're gaining weight and, you know, or they're losing their hair or whatever. Some external factors could be obviously work and job stress. The, the spouse goes to work and works all the time and is never home. Um, maybe the spouse loses their job or can't find a job. Um, and of course, family and friends stresses as well. Now, divorce can have an impact on both the couple and those around them, such as children. And while adults may adjust quicker and easier to divorce, it's typically harder for children. Um, children don't understand the reasons for a divorce, and they may display different emotions or behaviors such as anger, sadness, and rebellion. Um, however, eventually children do learn to accept the divorce and they learn how to deal with their emotions as well. Alright, so our closure. How do love and relationships impact our behavior and interactions? Uh, take a moment to think about that. Think about some of the different forms of love and how we, you know, build our relationships with our parents, how those can change, and also how marriage is um, impacted by different things. Um, and that will help you answer your question. Alright, hope you have a great rest of your day or night and I will talk to you guys uh, soon.